Genomics, the study of the structure and function of genetic material in a cell, has caused somewhat of a revolution in microbiology in recent years. But when did the story start? Going all the way back to 1871, the very first step was by a scientist called Friedrich Meischer, who identified the presence of a substance in the cell nucleus. He called this nuclein, but we now know this as DNA. More was uncovered about DNA in 1953, when James Watson and Francis Crick, with contributions from Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkins, discovered the double helix structure, taking us another step closer towards understanding our genome. Although these were the first steps in genomics, the history of modern genomics really began in the 1970s, a decade not just renowned for its flares. In 1977, Frederick Sanger developed a DNA sequencing technique that he and his team used to sequence the first ever full genome that of a virus called Phi X174. And this huge breakthrough didn't go unnoticed as Sanger was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1980. A few years on, in 1983, a technique called polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, was developed by Kerry Mullis at the Cetus Corporation in sunny California. PCR was a huge step forward, allowing a DNA sample to be amplified by several orders of magnitude, and this technique is still widely used today. Following this, in 1985, Alec Jeffries developed a method for DNA profiling. This is the process of determining an individual's DNA characteristics based on specific regions of the genome that are highly variable. This genomic technique can be used in applications such as parentage testing, medical research, or as a forensic technique in criminal investigations. 1990 saw not only the launch of the Hubble Space Telescope, but also something a bit closer to home, the Human Genome Project. This was a big moment, with the huge collaborative project aiming to sequence all three billion letters of a human genome in just 15 years. Five years on, and in the field of infectious diseases, the first bacterium genome sequence Haemophilus influenzae is completed. More genomes are completed in subsequent years, with yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae in 1996, also the year Dolly the Sheep was cloned, pathogen Encephalitis zoon cuniculi in 2001, and the malaria parasite Plasmodium falciparum hot on its heels, with the genome sequence being completed in 2002. The human genome was completed ahead of schedule in 2003, overall taking 13 years and costing approximately two billion pounds. However, since this initial project, next-generation sequencing platforms have resulted in a dramatic drop in sequencing costs. For example, the same amount of data can now be generated in approximately six minutes for a few hundred pounds. This drop in price has made genomics a reality for use on an individual level in clinics and as part of research. Looking at the present day, genomics-based studies are widely used. For example, genomics can elucidate how and why drug resistance emerges by identifying signatures. In addition, genomics has allowed not only the detection and characterization of outbreaks, but also the use of genomics can inform an outbreak's management. But what lies ahead? Many believe the future of genomics lies in personalised medicine. Could your doctors use genomics to understand your susceptibility to infection or your response to a vaccine? Moreover, with the advent of CRISPR, the field of genomic technology has never been more exciting. However, there are questions that still remain to be answered. For example, are innovations moving forwards at a pace faster than our ability to understand their potential consequences? Will whole genome sequencing lead to better health or more false positives and unnecessary treatment? And finally, what will the future of genomics look like? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below or you can reach us via both Facebook and Twitter.